Wicked King Manasseh repents. Second Kings twenty one. Second Chronicles thirty three. During the last 100 years of the kingdom of Judah, just before they were taken into captivity, a very wicked king named Manasseh ruled over the land. Despite his great sin, he called out to God for help. We will learn that God's forgiveness is not limited by the amount of our sin, but by our willingness to repent. Have you ever done something that your parents told you not to do? Maybe you were not supposed to eat cookies before supper, but you did it anyway. Did you have trouble finishing your dinner that night? Eating the wrong foods can sometimes cause us not to eat what is good for us. Perhaps your parents told you to do your homework, but you didn't. Then, when the teacher found out that you did not finish your work, you got in trouble. Usually, our parents tell us to do things that will help us. But if we do not listen, then we will suffer the consequences. In this lesson, we will learn about a son who did not follow the direction of his godly father, King Hezekiah. He is Manasseh, who became the king of Judah when he was just 12 years old. He led the nation of Judah back into the worship of idols. God warned Manasseh and the people about their sin through his prophets. Manasseh had to endure much trouble before he repented and came back to God. The story of King Manasseh is found in the books of 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. These books tell the history of the kings of Israel and Judah. It is in the second group of Old Testament books called the historical books. These books begin with Joshua, and go through Esther. Let's say these books. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. For over 300 years, the nation of Israel was divided into two kingdoms. Ten tribes lived in the northern kingdom of Israel, while the two tribes of Judah and Ephraim formed the southern kingdom of Judah. During the years of the divided kingdom, 20 different kings ruled over the northern kingdom of Israel. All of them were evil and wicked. They built idols and worshipped false gods. God sent many prophets to warn these kings of their sins and coming judgment. Among them were Elijah, Elisha, Jonah, Hosea, and Amos. Their message was one of repentance and a plea for God's people to return to him. However, their call to return to God was not heeded. In the southern kingdom of Judah, there were also 20 different kings. Most of them were also evil and wicked, except for eight good kings. God sent many prophets to the southern kingdom including Obadiah, Joel, Micah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, and Habakkuk, to warn these people of coming judgment 
if they did not obey him. God had promised King David that in his family, the tribe of Judah, would be the one in whom he would send his son Jesus to be the savior of the world. He would be the king of kings and his kingdom would reign forever. During the last 100 years of the kingdom of Judah, just before the nation was taken into Babylonian captivity, a very wicked king named Manasseh ruled over the land. He was the 13th king of Judah and reigned for 55 years, which was the longest of any of the kings of Judah. Manasseh was the son of good King Hezekiah and was only 12 years old when he was crowned the king of Judah. His father, Hezekiah, loved God. When Hezekiah had been ill and dying, God had healed him and extended his life by 15 years. During that last 15 years, God blessed Hezekiah with his first and only son, Manasseh. Once Manasseh was 12 years old, Hezekiah reigned together with his young son to train him to become a good ruler. King Hezekiah taught his young son well. Manasseh knew that when the Assyrians had besieged the city of Jerusalem, his father Hezekiah had prayed to God for help, and God had delivered them from their enemies. He also knew that his father had cleansed the temple and the land of idols. He had encouraged everyone to trust in God alone. Manasseh was 22 years old when his father died. He was now free to rule as he wanted. But unfortunately, the lessons that his father had taught him did not stick. Just because a father is godly does not necessarily mean that his children will do what is right. Right from the start, Manasseh was bad. Instead of obeying God or listening to the warnings of the prophet Isaiah, Manasseh rebelled. He encouraged the people to rebuild the altars to false gods that his father had destroyed. These altars appeared on the high places throughout the land. Manasseh then built idols to the god Baal and encouraged the people to worship this false god instead of the one true God. Despite the fact that God had forbidden his people to worship other gods, Manasseh set up wooden poles and altars so the Israelites could worship a goddess named Asherah. This was the same idol that wicked King Ahab and his evil wife Jezebel had worshiped. Manasseh went from bad to worse. He even put altars to false gods in the temple in Jerusalem. That was the very place that God had said his name would be forever. This was rude and insulting to the one true God. But Manasseh did not care. He continued to do more bad things. He built altars to worship the planets and stars. Instead of worshiping the God who made the stars, the Israelites began to worship the things that God had made. This worship of the heavens is called astrology and was something that God had forbidden. Manasseh's wickedness increased as he began to embrace forbidden occult practices. He sought advice from sorcerers, 
astrologers, and mediums. Even worse, when Manasseh became the father of a baby boy, he offered his son up as a sacrifice to a false god. It was a very wicked thing to do. God still loved Manasseh and the people of Israel, but he could not allow this wickedness to carry on. So God sent prophets to warn King Manasseh that unless he changed his ways, then God would have to punish him and the nation very severely. Two of these prophets were Micah and Isaiah. You have done many wicked things, said the prophets. You have led the nation of Judah into sin, and the people are wickeder than the nations around them. Now, because you have been so wicked, I'm going to bring such judgment, it will make your ears tingle when you hear about it. I am going to wipe Jerusalem clean of its sin, like someone who washes a plate and turns it upside down. But King Manasseh did not listen. He continued to fill Jerusalem with innocent blood as he murdered those who stood in his way. He became the most evil king of Judah. One of the people that King Manasseh is said to have murdered was Isaiah the prophet. How terrible of a sin it was to kill God's faithful servant. The Lord had warned Manasseh and the people of Judah, but they refused to listen. So God acted in judgment. A few years later, the Lord brought the army commanders of the king of Assyria to invade the land. They marched right up to Jerusalem and conquered it. They captured Manasseh and put him in chains. The Assyrians put a hook through Manasseh's nose and led him away all the way to Assyria as a prisoner. How humiliating that must have been for a king. The king of Assyria was also the governor of Babylon and Manasseh was taken to this city, which was known for its wickedness. Manasseh was put in prison and remained there for 12 years. He was in great distress. Manasseh had lost everything. He lost his money, his wealthy life, his servants, his palace, everything. He was now a prisoner. After being in prison for many years, Manasseh realized how bad and foolish he had been. He began to cry in sorrow for his disobedience. He knelt down in his prison cell and told God how sorry he was. Manasseh humbled himself before God and pleaded for forgiveness and help. Manasseh had wasted 50 years of his life being a bad king. Do you think God could ever forgive him? Could God still love him after all the wicked things he had done? A lot of people would say no. But God answered Manasseh's prayer. He looked into Manasseh's heart and saw that the king was truly sorry. So God forgave him of his terrible sin. Then suddenly the king of Assyria released Manasseh from prison 
and let him return to Jerusalem as the king of Judah once more. Once back in Jerusalem, Manasseh had his palace, his servants, and his wealth back. But this time, he was a different kind of king. He set about living to obey God. He got rid of the idols on the high places throughout the land. The altars to false gods in the temple and city were pulled down and removed from the city. The temple was cleared of idols and objects that God had forbidden. King Manasseh restored the altar to God in the temple and made sacrifices and peace offerings on it. The king told the people to serve God. He urged them to obey God until the day he died. Manasseh had misled the nation of Israel and had set a very bad example, but now he urged everyone to repent and turn back to God as he had done. Finally, Manasseh was acting like a good king. His leadership was helping others to do what was right too. But sadly, the people of God were not interested. As evil as Manasseh was, he decided to change his way of living and he turned back to God. That is what repentance is all about. God is eager to forgive us of things we do wrong, and he wants everyone, even the most wicked people in the world, to repent. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But sadly, the consequences of sin cannot be erased. Sin is like driving nails into a piece of wood. When you remove the nails, the holes still remain. God can forgive our sins and remove them but often we will have to suffer the consequences of that sin. God gives all of us the ability to make choices. Some people think they can do bad things while they are young and then try to live better when they get older. They think they can have fun or sow their wild oats while they are young, and then make up for it by being good later. But when we make bad choices, there are consequences to pay. Repentance is more than just saying, I'm sorry, God. It is changing the choices we make and living as God wants us to. God is willing to forgive if we are willing to change. Repentance is turning away from sin and turning to God. Repentance is evident when we make the commitment to show by our actions that we have changed. Few people would think that King Manasseh deserved God's forgiveness, but God not only listened to his plea, but was moved by it. God's love and forgiveness is shown to anyone who truly repents, even to those who have done the most terrible things. God wants to give us the gift of salvation to all who will turn to him. Our memory verse is Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This verse is telling us that to follow Christ means that there will be a change in the direction of our life. We will stop depending on ourselves and start depending on him for everything. Only God can save us by giving to us his Holy Spirit. Let's say our verse again together. Acts 2, 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. God loves us so much, and he desires that all come to repentance. That is why he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to pay the price for our sin. We must come to him in faith, believing that Jesus is the Christ, and be willing to trust him to forgive us of our sin. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this lesson that teaches us the importance of repenting and turning to you for salvation. Forgive us of the sin of rebellion and selfishness. Help us to repent of our sins like King Manasseh did and turn to you for our salvation. Give us faith to trust in your son, Jesus, who died to pay the debt of our sin. Only you can give us mercy and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, repent and turn to God. Music